for always being there. Distance can be a barrier and distance can never be a barrier from the move of God. Thank you for always set this precious time for us to come in with the Holy Spirit. I stand before you, your brother in Christ. I say good morning to you. Good morning, whatever that has to do with you. Thank you for always keep this time at the center of your heart. Jesus is the same as we know. The way he favored the early believers, the way he favored the early apostles and disciples, it still happened today in our life. He has never changed. He still remained the same. I really appreciate you for always say, hey, it is time for us to meet Brother Benjamin, for us to pray together and to share God's word together. Yeah, today is another fresh day for us to petition to the heavens. Because prayer, it is petition. Prayer is demand. Prayer is application. Yes, it's a demand. It's an application. That is prayer. The heaven can choose to accept the prayer to be answered now. The heavens can accept your prayer but choose to postpone the answer for another day, another week, another month, or another year. But he still remains the same. So prayer, it is not obligatory that after that prayer, it is a must for you to start receive the answer. Prayer is the only medium that believers communicate to their Heavenly Father. Yes. Prayer is the only medium believers, I mean genuine ones, communicate to their Heavenly Father. So, the prayers we have been offering in the past up to today up to now, it doesn't mean the heavens has not been hearing us. They have been hearing us. Like earlier said, prayer is an application that you are seeking job. When you apply, you wait until they call you. Prayer is like a demand. It's not a force that they must call you after you have applied. So, brethren in Christ, it is our responsibility to constantly be in that attitude of prayers. Are you getting me? It is us believers, genuine, like you and I, that we must be in that attitude in prayer. Because that is the only way we can communicate to our master and satisfy our master and for our master to hear our voice. So thank you for always being there. We will not cease in praying. We pray. It's like a journey until you are placed. Even though you are placed, you must remain in that attitude of meditation and prayers. Thank you once more. Is still your brother? That we need to share God's word together. And I believe the time for us to meet was ringing in your heart. Thank you for being there. Yes. Our slogan every day God does nothing 
without his word. True. God almighty does nothing without his word. He word blesses. He word heals. His word delivers. He word provides. His word strengthen. When I mean his, his word, not the one on the paper, it's a slogan I need to remind you of. When I mean God's word, it's not the one on paper, but the one in our heart. The one in our heart, it is God talking to you. The one on the paper is someone else's testimony. Is someone else's biography. But God is talking to you every day. Thank you. There's a passage in the book of 1 Corinthians that I want us to, to splash our heart there to discover what Paul was standing, talking on behalf of the Holy Spirit because he was being given utterances for him to declare and proclaim the name of his master, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So God's word, God does nothing without his word. The word on the paper refreshes us. Why? God's spirit in our heart renew our strength. Let's go in the book of 1 Corinthians. There is a confusion in this Christendom now. So many confusion. But those who are genuine, if you are true, you can never be confused. Because Holy Spirit has given us that spirit to dictate to choose that spirit of discernment for you to be able to distinguish between true and false because Jesus is at the center. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 I'll take 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 I'll take Verse 12 and 13. Get it clearly. A little bit of confusion in society because the Holy Spirit knew that a time like this will come. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Saphios. Still another, I follow Christ. 13. Is Christ divided? Get it clearly. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized? In the name of Paul. Better than Christ. The text is clear. Where do you belong? It's like some of us today. You can stand to have access to all the apostles. You can stand today to have access to all the prophets. To all the preachers. To all the pastors, to all the teacher, preacher, that we don't have access to Jesus. For you to have ministers of God numbers in your handset, that does not make you see or think that you have access to Jesus. Because on that verse 12, there is a confusion that is happening up to today. And that same confusion that is happening today happened in that time. So the Holy Spirit was talking through Paul that some of you confess I belong 
the clan of this other pastor. That pastor there is fake. I belong to that prophet. That evangelist there is fake. I believe to that preacher. That teacher there is fake. I believe to this pastor. I believe to this prophet. Why so much division? Brother in Christ. For you participating in all the, the online prayers. For you to participate in all of the Zoom sessions, prayers. That does not make you listening to Jesus. That does not make you that Jesus know you. Brother in Christ. So, our Christianity, our fellowship should not be based on those aspects. It's like me standing here, your brother Benjamin. You can choose to believe. You can choose not to believe. But in all, Jesus should be at the center. Because a pastor can never be a true pastor without the Holy Spirit. A prophet can never be a prophet without the Holy Spirit. An evangelist can never be an evangelist without the Holy Spirit. Same thing to a preacher. Same thing to an apostle. Who make them that? Is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the giver of the comforter. So, brethren in Christ, most of us, we believe men than Jesus. Most of us, we put our faith in pastor than Jesus. We put our faith in apostles than Jesus. We put our faith to evangelists than Jesus. As for me and my household, Jesus is the center of my fellowship and my trusting God. Jesus is at the center of it. So I'm here for you to take your position as a Christian soldier. Stop confusion on the journey. The Holy Spirit does not confuse. The Holy Spirit is a very sensitive being. Why do you confess that? I belong to the pastor. I belong to the other prophet. I belong to that evangelist. I belong to that teacher. I belong to that preacher. I belong to that apostle. Why all this? Bread in Christ. Such character, such attitude can be the hindrance for heaven not to hear us. Such character, such attitude can be the hindrance for heaven not to hear us because you have centralized your belief, your faith on human. We, as ministers of God, we have a beginning, we have an end. A prophet has a beginning, has an end. A preacher has a beginning, he has an end. An apostle has a beginning, he has an end. An evangelist has a beginning, he has an end. A preacher has a beginning, he also has an end. Why so much confusion as a believer? Believer do not confuse. Bread in Christ, stick in Jesus. Ministers of God are mere branches. And you can never believe a branch without hang and trust the vine. Take note, we are the branches. Jesus is the vine. Some of us, we are frustrated because you have this handset of, the, you have the number of this man of God, this man of God, this man of God, this man of God, this man of God. At the end of the day, you no longer believe Jesus, you believe that men. We all have our limit. We all have our own differences. We all have our own challenges in one way or the other. But Jesus is the problem solver. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the redeemer. 
Jesus is the restorer, is the one who restore. Jesus Christ. He has the power to turn the table around. He has the power to keep you on that spot. So I'm here today, brethren in Christ, to encourage you that don't have a particular minister of God name in your heart that no. Believe us. Trust Jesus. There is a confession in this Christianity. Believe us. Trust Jesus. Better in Christ. There is so much confusion. Why? Let us follow the antecedent in the Bible for the early believers, the early apostles, the early disciples. You will see their character. When you believe, you believe Jesus. When you trust, you trust Jesus. Love people, but don't trust them. Trust is only to God, to Jesus. You can love, but your trust should not be on man. That is why the Holy Spirit asks them. The Holy Spirit asks you and I on that verse 13. That what? It says, on that 13, is Christ divided? It's a question. On that verse 13. Because I belong to the pastor, I belong to this prophet, I belong to this evangelist, I belong to this. No. Jesus is at the center of our belief. Yeah, he says, in Christ, is Christ divided? He's asking us this fundamental question. Is the Holy Spirit talking? Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Clear example. Please. Brethren in Christ, I'm here today to encourage us. I'm included for this gospel. You are also included for this gospel. Why so much confusion? It can make you your prayer. You don't even know the person that is right or the person that is wrong because we are only searching for answer. Yes. Let me accept this from you. We are hungry. As children of God. Yes. We are hungry. But I want to encourage you. Stop desperation. We are hungry. Which I agree. As believers. When I say hungry not only for food. We are hungry for so many answers in our life. But don't be desperate. You may likely collect from Satan. Thinking that you are collecting from Jesus. It is not everything that glitter before us that comes from God. Hold your ground. Don't be confused. Yes. I'm giving to you what I practice. I'm declaring to you what I practice. I'm hungry, but I'm not desperate. You are hungry, but don't apply desperation. That is Jesus for you. Was Paul crucified? Was that your pastor you say you believe in? Crucified? Was that your prophet that you throw into your hand that you believe? Crucified? Was that evangelist that you believe in him or her? Crucified? No. Capital? No. Jesus is the one that was crucified and paid a sin. He knew nothing. Where so much spirit of confusion in our midst? Because you believe this man of God, he has prayed with you. You wait for three months, four months, five months, no answer. You turn your back from the man of God. You go to the other man of God. You pray one, two, three, four, five months. You turn there. You go back. You go to the other one. Why so much confusion in Christianity? The same God that answered the apostles. The same God that answered the early believers. The same God that answered the early Christian. The same God that answered the disciples. Can still answer us. Don't be confused. Your situation, if it does not put you on bed reading, it will make you strong. As far as you are still breathing this air, and you are still strong, go about your little, little activity, bread in Christ, there is still a big hope. 
for the future. Don't be confused. Coming before you with this book of Corinthians, this first Corinthians chapter 1 verse Verse 12 to 13, it is the Holy Spirit that put it in my heart. As for me, I love all men of God. They are my brothers, they are my sisters. But Jesus is at the center of my worship. For you to believe a man of God that his ministry is crowded does not make him true. True is from within. In the innermost being of us. You can turn the table. You can make it. Why so much confusion? So I'm here today. It's like some of us. I will really take some of my time. Sometime and then I will try to. Not even to pray but. To encourage you in his word. Without quoting the scripture. Experience is the highest teacher on earth. Experience is the highest on earth. Because experience does not only come when things are going well. Experience comes when you find yourself in difficult situation, in difficult moment, in difficult period. Then when you come out of that situation, all those circumstances, it makes you strong. It makes you to have experience to manage this earth. Brother in Christ, I'm here to remove that spirit of confusion. I know I'm not the only one as your pastor, your prophet, your brother, whatever you can call. There are so many. Don't doubt about it. It's good to take their sermon, but trust Jesus for an answer because a pastor also needs blessing from God. A prophet also needs blessing from God. A teacher of the gospel, an evangelist of the gospel, a preacher of the gospel, an apostle of God also needs blessings from God. But the blessings are not visible because we are a promised generation. As you are looking at me, looking at me also, we are blessed already. Originally we are blessed. Originally, we are blessed. But what can be the hindrance for us not to receive all those blessings in our day-to-day -day activity? You see those blessings where you put your hand, you see the blessing, where you, what you are doing, you see the blessing, what you organize, you see the blessing, what you plan, you see the blessing. Embedded in Christ. So you must be strong. Don't be confused. You must be what? You must be strong. Lord Jesus. Yeah, your children. Believe in you. And trust in you. Guide them, oh Lord. Guide them. Guide us. For your endless love. Guide us. Your endless protection. Guide us to your endless plan in our lives. Oh Lord Jesus. I'm here as you sent me to them. Strengthen them, oh Lord Jesus. Strengthen them. Energize your strength to them. Encourage them. They believe in you. That's why they are connected to this Zoom prayer session. Give us the spirit of truthness and identification in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give them the spirit of truthness and identification in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we believe in you. They trust in you. That's why they made it possible to be part of this Zoom prayer session right from the beginning. Lord Jesus, take this from me as you have anointed this word. Make us to be your instrument of change. Lord Jesus, your instrument of belief. We 
trust and believe in you, Lord. They trust and believe in you. Guide and protect them, Lord. Don't allow us to be in a confusion state. But make us to be the people, the children you want us to be. Father, may your strength always be in our heart. May your strength always be implanted in the testimony of our conscience. We believe in you, Lord Jesus. We trust in you, Lord. Your children are there because they believe in you. They, your children connected to this Zoom prayer session because they believe in you. Father, guide us and energize our strength. Guide us and energize our strength. Thank you for today. May God strengthen your heart and energize you. We we'll meet on Friday for another meeting. Thank you. God bless you.